five six is the public comment period. Uh, but I don't think we have anybody signed up to talk on that. That's not this. We already had that case of mistake. Okay, I'm sorry. Are you going to check? Uh, well, well, I knew somebody was supposed to come. Right. Well, that's, Mr. Lee's. Mr. Lee's here is a reference for consent item, uh, agenda item 21. 21 or 22. It doesn't necessarily state which one belongs to the football. Okay. So I believe uh, that means that we can move past us. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. No, you're, you're, we were on the same, same page. So we'll take up item seven, presentation and discussion of the updated report by the Director of Electric Utilities on his DZD regarding customer service, business and practices, procedures and policies, customer concerns and complaints, billing forms and procedures, and helping our staff and clients. Mr. McCullough. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> I'll point out a few highlights in the written materials. Uh, on page 10, uh, there's a little blurb there about some of the media that's that's out there on our website. And uh, I encourage you to take a look at some of those videos if you haven't done that. We're trying to put some positive news stories on our website. And uh, I think Matt has done a good job with those, those stories. We're interviewing different work groups within the organization, uh, different projects that we've been working on. So there's good, good information out there have time to look at that. Uh, on page 12, I just want to mention that uh, this first paragraph there talks about uh, some things that have changed. We've got the updated outage map is now available on lpnl.com. I know that was uh, it was missing for quite some time, but we've got it available now and uh, provided some timely information about outages that, that, we, that we have on our system. And then uh, again, some additional videos out there with the customer service team. Uh, and this one is actually, it's easier to find it if you go to the uh, City of Lubbock Utilities website. Uh, there's three, three main members of our customer service team are, are shown there. Yes, so on the outage map, you're out in the power dot or whatever, so you're, you're not working. When you pull up your phones, it show the map on there? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. We? All right. Yes, sir. Yeah, right. And we've started every time there's an outage and we will post in preparation for that outage and while it's going on, that's just a dedicated link in all of those social media posts now. So if you see something pop up in your feed that says we're having an outage, you can go right to the map. Okay. Okay, so moving on to uh, page 15. Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Did the chaos ever be upgraded where they get changed. No, and that's not in our, that, that's that's just not a functionality of, of most kiosks, really. I mean, just like APMs, that's just not a function unless you, I don't know if there is, it even is a one out there. Is there, there a, is. a it's, it's Well, apparently it hasn't been a problem, but we did talk about it in the past. So right. You know, we, we continue to have someone out front in the lobby to assist customers to help educate them on how to use the kiosk. But we still also have, you know, for folks who, you know, maybe want to get their exact change back, you know, we still have the option for the cashier so they can, you know, have that personal service that they so desire. Right. Just a question. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand your concern. It's, uh, no, I wasn't concerned with that. So, uh, on page, page 15, I wanted to highlight that there's a little note there kind of in the fine print just above the uh, load curve that talks about Cook GT2. Uh, you know, we had, we've had GT3 out for quite some time and it's there's actually an agenda item today to approve repairs to GT3. Well, we had experience, experience to failure with GT2 as well. So, and there's also another agenda item to uh, repair to, to start the design work on assessing the repairs that are necessary for GT2. So, Got some older units out of Cook. They're uh, they're problematic. Fortunately, we have insurance on them, and most of the damages uh, is going to be covered on both of the uh, both of the ins damage incidents that we that we occurred. Uh, on page sixteen, uh, you see our meter reader error rate is coming back now. Unfortunately, it's 
and move them back in the right direction now. And then uh, it always amazes me to see how many pieces of mail we send out every month. The chart right below the meter reader the chart there talks about the number of pieces mailed. That blue chart, 127,000 pieces mailed. And then the, uh, the, green, the green bar there, 115,000 outbound courtesy calls. So there's a lot of traffic on a monthly basis you know, with mail going out, calls going out, uh, it's just boggles about how, how much communications we, we are doing. And then the second bullet at the very bottom of the page there also talks about 163,000 email notifications, 16,000 text messages, and then we've got some new subscribers to our paper this building too, so uh, we're, we're still working to encourage folks to move over to uh, paperless billing. We're almost to the goal. Our goal goal that we set was 10 percent and we're almost there to 9.55 percent customers that are on the paperless billing and jumping way over to page 25 at this point after we've got five new commercial customers on the list uh, been a pretty pretty active couple of last few months in terms of adding adding folks to this list so with the first Commercial uh, growth is continuing on. Page 27 is the uh, capital program report. <coughs> and we're continuing to refine that. Uh, we've got a lot of information in there. We may try to uh, uh, consolidate some of that so that you're not having to look at 25 pages to, to get a picture of that. If you have any thoughts about how to improve that report, well, let us know. We'll try to try to customize it as, as y'all want to see here. And that's all I was going to comment on. If y'all have any questions, I'll be happy. Dave, on page um, 29, okay. the northwest projected. Yes, ma'am. The projected is over the budget. Looks um, like the ferry and the other two, everything's way, way under. Um, you're talking about the projected dollar amount is uh -huh. over the budgeting amount. Uh -huh. And I do not have the answer to that question, perhaps, Mr. McGinnis can talk about I do have a little bit of information on that. The, the, the costs that, that we're including in these, in these forecasts are sometimes a year out. Um, sometimes the steel markets a little volatile. We're trying to, as David said, we're trying to refine those numbers uh, as we go. Uh, but anything further than a year is, is uh, an estimation. Okay. Okay. Uh, I would say it's, it's not based on any procurement. We haven't done procurement on, the, on that project yet, so we haven't ordered the poles, we haven't ordered the wire. So it's uh, what you see out in the marketplace. Kind of. Yeah, it's 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 a pretty fuzzy estimate at this point until we, until we actually start ordering stuff. <coughs> um, other questions concerning the uh, items in the report. I guess I had an observation of this. Uh, go back to page 15 and we look at our outage causes. The second uh, graph down on the left hand side. So, again, I'm, uh, I'm challenged when it comes to color. Right. But I believe the highest bar in each of those months is system. <coughs> okay. That looks neat. So, does that. I mean, that indicates it's basically component a flaw, a component of a flaw. Freddy's Farmers, uh, Fuse is blown for other reasons. Connections. Uh, connections. If it wasn't one of those other, it wasn't weather, animals, public. Right. right. And, and I know we had <coughs> We had some uh, fairly major outages in in July and August, uh, where where we've got stresses in the system. Right. So, uh, but it's 
good to see that that number's coming down. Generally speaking, or maybe can you give a general? Normally, that number is unless we have a weather event, that number bottoms out and cooler. We have more stress in the warmer months. That's true. Yeah, if you look at the uh, the outage chart, kind of down to the right from there, third one from the right to the bottom, from the top on the right hand side, system it's average duration. duration yeah. Yeah. That's the one that tracks month to month outage, and, and then you have kind of the rolling average, the, right. the, uh, the line across there, which is green. Can't, can't tell the, is the rolling 12 month average. And so that's the one I kind of pay attention to because it shows what we what the trend is on yeah. the long period of time. And the, and the recent trend is, is down from what it has been in the last in the last year or so. But it, a lot of that's dependent on weather, though, because we've had a pretty mild thunderstorm season right. yeah, uh, mild winter compared winter. to last year. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of thunderstorms and it's a pretty major outage. So it'll vary from year to year, but you're right. The summertime, if you look at, at May through August, we had a, we had much higher uh, problems with outages than we did in the, in the spring and the winter. So. That's generally the case. I think the you know, thunderstorms pop up. The heat stresses on the system occur, and uh, loading problems occur. We uh, one of the major outages we had this year was the loading loading problem at Chalker, where we had the mobile substation in. That was probably the most significant outage we've had all year. And that was in May. Late May when we had it through the hospital. Yeah, I know it's not listed in the. CIP breakdown, but maybe uh, as far as converting uh, downtown uh, phase one or the different phases, or how are we progressing on, on that? Uh, we, we actually have the uh, project manager with us today. You want to you give sort of an update, Jerry? Uh, yeah, I can. Um, uh, would, you, a, would you? Uh, step up to uh, the field yeah. uh, Remind us, introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Jared Hughes. I am the engineering project manager for the construction group. Um, yeah, downtown, we have a new influx of, of cash, obviously with the new uh, fiscal year coming in October. So we have uh, contacted our consulting engineer, SGS Engineering, to uh, continue to revise the previous design that was provided about a year and a half ago to this board. And uh, we're going to look at some target blocks in the phase one, two, and three areas where the city has already installed uh, duct banks for us. So we're going to look at doing some sub feeder uh, installations um, and also some alloc conversions as well. So we're just now starting that process. You're doing some work around the Citizens Tower now, are you? Yeah, we already had some work that was already in progress before October, obviously, Citizens Tower being a good example. Uh, the uh, block south of uh, Rager Dykes, the Green Building, um, as well as we've been finishing out our, our feeder lines down at BJ, pulling cable, terminating, energizing. Uh, so we're still working on a lot of that right now, finishing all that up. We're actually working to pull in a, uh, some underground feeder, sub feeders down 14th Street to serve Citizens Tower, as well as the new LPNL administration building. So. What about the Pioneer Building? Yes, Pioneer Building. Yeah. So, so as far as the uh, as far as the overall deal is, there holdups with uh, getting uh, other services off of our pole? Is, is that still an issue? Or we, or yes, I would say so. Yeah, I mean it's all we can do at this point is minimize our overhead wherever possible. Uh, once we put our system underground. We can retire overhead facilities and pull them down and cut the poles off above the telecommunication facilities, and that's as far as we can go at this point. It was that yes, TPPA board meeting a couple of, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we're not the only ones that are having that problem. Having that problem. discussion about some other folks that are having problems with uh, communications, utilities getting off their poles. And so, what they've started doing is put the signs on there after, after the electric stuff is removed, saying that this pole is to be removed by. So and so communications coming out of it. And that's apparently had some some impact on getting the, the, the communications connected. When you do that, do you abandon the phone? Yes. Yes, sir. 
Has there been any movement or any change on the super blocks? Or, if I recall, they're kind of in limbo. Uh, well, the, the original super block was the area between Main Street and Broadway and Avenue O and Avenue Q. That's actually being built finally about four years after the fact uh, for the Cotton Bowl Hotel Court. And it is under construction right now. They're just now, it really started scratching the ground basically, but it has been through site review. It's on the commercial list now. Uh, so I think we expect them to, Tynert's the contractor on that. So it, it is going, that, that, that target block is actually going forward. Um, the other target blocks that were discussed originally, I, um, I want to say one was uh, was city substation, formerly SAT. I think the skeletons for that substation are still in existence, but the substation itself has been completely retired. Uh, the walls there, but I think that's still, like you said, kind of up in limbo at this point. But whatever uh, happens over there with the development, we're ready to serve it. In that area, we actually have underground facilities across the street, so. We're just waiting for development. Is that the one over uh, behind uh, North of Main Street? Yes, sir. It's uh, yeah, between 10th and Main the, uh, on the east side of wall right here. on east side of Avenue. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Excel Energy had a substation there that we we bought and dismantled. Mm -hmm. Any uh, any other questions? Are we going to have, are we going to talk about AMI so we can talk about that separately? We can talk about that right now. And, and Michelle Cook and Todd Stoker and David Cook are all here to okay. give you an update. Uh, Michelle or Todd, I don't know who you wanted to give an update on the topic. <laughs> okay. I'm assuming you're in reference of Councilwoman Joy's question about yes. the pilot not. Okay. I am, and I'm looking at page 21. Yes. yes. Hi. I'm Todd Stoker. I'm with TMG Consulting, uh, helping out on the BAMI project. Um, as far as where we're at on the project, uh, we um, really the three main areas that we're looking at is, is the software. Uh, we have to interface the software to the existing billing system. Uh, that basically requires five different interfaces. And we're progressing through the schedule. Um, in previous months, we talked about a risk to that schedule. Uh, we've added some resources and we've done some things to pull that back on the schedule. So we're where we expect to be with that. Um, the first of the five interfaces are completely, is completely tested and done. Um, and two more of the interfaces are in testing. And um, if I check downstairs, they're, they're pretty close to being wrapped up on, on those interfaces. So, um, Three out of the five are, are nearly complete for the software side, so we're kind of on track to support the schedule there. Um, the second area that we, we focus a lot of energy on is the customer communication. Um, you know, Matt works with us on a, on a formal communication plan of how we're gonna roll out and, and let customers know. Um, the first piece of the direct communication for that customer interaction is ready to go. It's, it's really in the initial installation area where we're gonna deploy a thousand 500 electric, 500 water meters to prove out the system to get everything working and, and, and merging through. Those letters are ready to go. We've identified the, the specific locations. We're waiting on a milestone within the project team that is basically the, the collectors and the meters meet the internal first article. And as soon as we pass that milestone, we're gonna send the, the letters to um, the customers in that area notifying that they may or may not receive a meter exchange in, in the next couple months. And if they don't receive one at this time, they'll receive one later during the, the normal deployment. Um, so, you know, we're, we're in pretty good shape with our customer communications. Uh, we have updated the website and, and done a lot of other work around that. We've been working closely with the city and um, their website department. As the city moves forward with the water piece of this, um, we're making sure that all of the, the messaging and all of the customer touch points coordinate together and we're not doing two different things disjointedly. So we're working very closely that it comes across to a person that has both electric and water service that um, it's, a, it's a coordinated effort and not two different people doing different things. Um, the third area is really the deployment of getting the equipment into the field. And um, this has been an area where we've been tight to the schedule all the way through the project. 
Um, and you know, a day here and there adds up to a week or, or, or a couple weeks. Um, we can hit a couple snags along the way and we're tracking about two weeks behind where we originally thought we were gonna be uh, with the network deployment. Um, we've done a number of things within the project team to, to get things back on track, to, to make up a little bit of time. We had a, uh, just came out of an all morning meeting with our deployment contractor and, and was working through exactly what that's looking like. So we, we have the plans in place on, on kind of the way we're gonna do the deployment. Um, we're expecting to put the first data collectors, these are the devices that go throughout the service territory, um, in place in around the 1st of November. Uh, so that's tracking, I think on the, the original schedule, it was around October 10th. So, you know, we're, we're um, just a little bit behind there, but we don't think that's gonna be a major impact to the overall uh, deployment and we should be in, in good shape come first quarter of, of next year next fifth, uh, calendar year uh, to, to start the major rollout. Um, as far as the budget's concerned, um, our expected budget is tracking pretty close to what we thought um, so far. We're still pretty early in. Our spend rate is a little bit behind where we thought it would be, uh, but we expect that to catch up as soon as we start putting collectors uh, in the field. And really the, the, the major risk that we're, we're tracking right now is strictly the schedule. And, and we're holding uh, our vendors and we're holding uh, everybody really tight to the schedule because you know, the, the interdependencies of this and the CIS projects and the other things going on makes the schedule important. But you know, that's, that's really where we're focusing around making sure that the project stays on track. Page 21, it had the first 500 meters will go on October 18th to November 5th. Now you said that initial one is now November 1. Do you anticipate uh, how long for every meter for those 500? Does a meter, is there one meter a day, 10 a day? How, how do you do that? Um, it it will take approximately 10 to 15 working days to deploy all 1,500 electric 500 water. So once we get out there in November, it will be very quick to get all of them in place. So when do you anticipate that, with that first thousand uh, being done? Being complete. Um, late November, we're still working through exactly because it's gonna bump into the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, and we're, we're trying to make sure we um, understand what impact that's going to have um, but you know we're, we're looking at most of it done in November maybe a little bit bleeding into to the first week of December so could we estimate by December 1 you're going to be pretty close on the thousand I at this point based on where we're at I believe that's an accurate statement and just just a question do y'all meet mm -hmm. daily Weekly, I mean, I mean, clearly this is a high priority to get this done. It is. Already two weeks behind. How are you going to keep it? No more than two weeks. Behind? Um, and and we do meet very regularly. Uh, the project team is is assigned 100 percent to the project. Um, the vendor, who if you recall, is Itron. Um, they have resources that are committed and are here on a daily basis every week. Um, we did. Um, recently work with them to get a new resource put in that, that can help navigate as a large organization um, sometimes things get confused internal in their organization on where do you get things done how do you get things put through their machine um, so they gave us a, a more experienced resource that can under that can navigate their internal uh, organizational structure a little bit more efficiently uh, which is one of the reasons why we, we got a little bit behind schedule. So with their new commitment and their um, new uh, resource, it looks like we're, we're making very good progress on some of the things that, that we're bottlenecked behind. Um, one of the other things um, we're doing this week is um, we're kicking off the water, formally kicking off the water project, uh, but along with that, um, we are developing higher level executive relationships between ITRON and, and the director utility to make sure that they have that high level communication and a path to escalate in, in case of any concerns. Do you think that 
think you're getting the support you need from them that you're not really kidding I, I do believe we are. <laughs> we're actually meeting with the vice president of Hytron tomorrow. So, now, we're, uh, are you talking about our leadership here at the or the water park? Our leadership at LP now. Okay. Um, now, if you recall, the the project's being run from the steering committee, and the steering committee has representatives from the from LP now as well as the city. And we meet on a monthly basis and we review the project and we review more detailed lists of everything going on and, and all the activities. So um, all of the leadership is certainly involved in, in steering the project. But what I had said earlier about meeting with the, the executives of Hytron, that's going to be Mr. McCullough. Mr. Bennett, I think maybe I misunderstood, Tom, but I think I heard conflicting information. The schedule says October 18th and 5th on the thousand. You said you were two weeks behind, and then you said you anticipated being the first week in December. That sounds like a month behind, not two weeks. I, the first week in December comment was when I think we'll be completing the installation from November November fifth to December first is a month. You said first That's week. what you just said. I apologize. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, that's I have so many dates floating in my right. head. Um, yeah, so the last I looked in the, in the estimated completion, because I didn't bring the project plan up here as far as the exact date. We have a 300 line project plan that, that we're tracking to. Um, and you know, we've, we've been working through this in the last couple of days, which is why, my, my, why the dates are a little bit fluid in my head. Um, but I guess I misspoke on the number of weeks. I would still say the dates are between November 1st and December 1st. There's a catch-up plan? And there is a catch-up plan that we're basically executing this week. Um, so their first article testing, which was supposed to complete last week, is, is in process as we speak. And you know, we'll have good indication that we're starting to meet the milestones that will give us more confidence in the schedule than we've had today. And I think most of the events that have led to this delay has been on the vendor side, and that's what Todd and Michelle and Jamie and David and all of us are work, have worked on over the last week or two to get back on track, to get their attention. And that's why we've had a new project manager assigned. We've interviewed Todd and Michelle has interviewed that project manager who has much more experience than the project manager they had originally assigned to us. So that's going to get it all back on track. So we're, we're confident, confident that the changes we've made over the last week are going to get this back on track where we have experienced some some delays so, but still a month in a in this project we we have a lot of flexibility in making a lot of that up we may not make it all all the way up but, uh, it's, it's i'm sure Todd will attest and i can from my experience when you get behind on the schedule it's hard to catch up it, it is hard to catch up and the the front end of a project is is usually the chaos period where you're you're getting everything lined up and, and getting rolling. Um, I absolutely feel we're beyond that point in the project. Um, the tasks, the team, the, the the folks, the understanding of exactly what needs done is rolling through. And, and you know that 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 lead-in portion of the project probably took a little longer than it needed to. Uh, Andy alluded to us us changing the um, the project manager. Um, but I, I agree with Andy that, that, that we definitely feel like we've taken the right actions with the vendor and we have the right focus and attention from the vendor. But we have, I'm sorry. Is the vendor on site or they just kind of fly in and do that or are they on site? They're here. here. They are They are here. And they're going to stay here until we get it done. They're they not, absolutely are going to be here. here that was one of the things that, that we put in place a month ago is that, that somebody from the vendor will be here every week. Today we have, what, we have three iTron people on site with three more coming in this afternoon. And they're gonna stay, they're not gonna be weaving in and out. Correct, the project manager and the, and the uh, technical consultants are here each and every week. If you go downstairs, you'll see two pretty large size rooms where we have our dedicated staff full time working on this project. Both rooms are very active all the time. They're working on the day to day business we also have members from TNG, our consultant. We also had the ITRON folks actively in Lubbock. We also 
um, have they have an up, a weekly update meeting with me to keep make sure I'm, I'm making sure everything's on track. They give me updates. We have a monthly steering committee meetings with all the city and LPL management. And so this is a high focus, high intensity exercise. It's it's day in day out. You go down the room, you'll see a large number of folks working full time on this project, and that's all they're doing. They're fully 100% dedicated. Defenders here every day, every morning. Yes. Mm -hmm. Other, other questions for Tom? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other uh, comments part of the seven? Any other questions? If not, let's move to item A, presentation and discussion of financing the capital statements, financing options. Audits and financial policies of low retirement life related to debt issuance issues, reserve account funding, cost allocation, revenue and expense projections, purchase power and cost recovery factor, customer meter billing and service issues. Customer meter billing and service issues. Mr. Sales. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, as usual, we'll start off with uh, our purchase power rates uh, as required by the tariff. Uh, we're right at um, 112, $112.63. As you know, uh, effective October 1st, we lower those uh, just a little bit going into the winter season. Uh, and that will show up next month. XL is currently at $119.32. And then the, the Texas survey average is just a little higher than, about a dollar higher than us at 113.65. So you can see that we're tracking right along um, kind of where we should be uh, along with the rest of the state. Um, our uh, deferred revenue on the balance sheet went from 9.7 to uh, 12.8 million uh, for the month of September. Uh, in terms of the actual financials themselves, the income statements, um, you can see that operating revenues are tracking right about where they should be. Um, we had uh, the 5% base rate increase that uh, we've seen elevating revenues and then that's offset uh, by lower purchase power revenues since we've had lower purchase power costs throughout the year. Um, and you can see that evidenced here in the lower purchase of fuel and power costs. And then uh, the, the supplies, maintenance, and other is driven largely by ERCOT um, and transmission related costs and then uh, some Cubra costs that uh, bled over from last year into this year. And, and that's the same story that, that we've seen all year. Um, something that's uh, I think worth mentioning the non operating revenues uh, expenses is better this year by one and a half million dollars about half of that is related to uh, the higher Fed funds target rate um, so we're seeing that in our uh, interest earnings and then uh, if you'll recall um, on GT3 uh, when we brought that to you last month the, uh, one of the funding mechanisms for that was insurance proceeds of over $800,000. And so you can see that that uh, has hit the, uh, the income statement. So the balance sheet, this is really uh, kind of the, the big change. And we've been talking about it for a couple months. Uh, the, big, the big change is the restricted investments uh, went up by, uh, from last September, by about 97 million. But if you're looking at it from uh, July to August, uh, that number increased by $106 million, and that's due to the debt that we issued in August. And then the other side of that uh, journal entry is on uh, the other side of the balance sheet, and we see that if you have the bonds payable long term and short term, uh, those increased by uh, the same amount. And so uh, back to the asset side, uh, cash, if you're looking at it relative to last month, is up. Uh, about another six million dollars it's largely driven by operating activities um, but we also uh, the city does the drawdown from restricted investments as we spend money bond money um, we reimburse ourselves uh, and so that's up and then and we expect that to be uh, up again uh, in September as we close out the year budget uh, just how are we doing compared to uh, how we did at the same time last year compared to actuals? Um, you can see that revenues are down uh, overall 
compared to last year and that's largely due to purchase power cost as our costs are lower so our pass through revenues uh, and you can see that purchase power here is down about six percent and then total funding sources are down about six percent so that's that's really the big driver since that's about two-thirds of our budget um, again kind of the same story that, that we've seen all year transmission is higher uh, relative to uh, where it was last year, but we know that that's related to ERCOT and some of those engineering expenses and studies, and then customer service, um, again, uh, some of those Kubra expenses that bled over into this fiscal year. In terms of the capital program, we've got um, 160, 161 million appropriated to date and 60 open capital projects with about 62 million of that remaining. Um, in terms of uh, being available, but you can see we've we've spent about 31 through the month of August, and then we've got another 68 encumbered. And then down here, you can see the detail. Uh, we spent just under 2.2 million dollars in the month of August. And uh, for anybody keeping score uh, in terms of capex relative to depreciation, we're uh, just shy of one and a half times uh, so far this year, which. Uh, I believe next year we'll see that number really take off as uh, the, the capital program uh, begins to uh, be in full force related to the ERCOT, uh, Sherry Land, and, and then our internal uh, network. Uh, so I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has. So uh, statement of cash flow shows $22 million of CapEx year to date. Yes, sir. And uh, so $2.2 million of this month. Yes, sir. So that's where you're going with that. So that's about one and a half times of appreciation and That's right. So, um, question, uh, if you go back to page 55, which is your, your operating expenses, and uh, I hadn't really uh, focused on this before. Our OPEP from the previous year mm -hmm. was 1.2. Now, are we flushing all that through the change in accounting principles this time? Yes. Okay. And so that, that's what uh, we've got down there at the bottom. Uh, be, and the reason we did that um, was, I think, in, was it 15, 16, 80, when we did GASB 68? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we showed it reducing, uh, or, you know, increasing expenses all year long. And then we got to year end, and it was actually, you know, a, a prior period adjustment. Right. And so uh, rather than overstating expenses all year long like we did, a few years ago we actually showed it as a change in accounting principle so you can see how the, the income statement is actually uh, moving um, relative to uh, you know without that change included uh, and so we show it as a, a, an adjustment to net position which is how it will flow through uh, at year end. But at the end of the year there will be a portion of that OPEP that's actually current period expenditure. Right but uh, and, and this is an estimate um, you know, we, we don't know exactly. Uh, I think that the city's accounting department uh, is working with the actuaries to determine exactly how much of that is uh, current versus. Okay. So, okay. That was my point. So, we'll so true it up. We're basically <coughs> only increasing the liability through changing the accounting principle. Right. It's bifurcated. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions on the uh, financials? Anything else on that? That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Good presentation. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Um, I believe we are going to full uh, bypass item nine, strike that from the agenda for this month, which brings us to the consent agenda, which is items 10 through 22. And I would ask if any uh, one on the board wants to pull and consider separately any of the items on the consent agenda. And let's approve extensive list. Yeah, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as submitted. So motion is made and seconded to approve the consent agenda. All in favor, please indicate the same matter. 